Ponds are a fantastic way of attracting wildlife to our gardens, although many people in built up and urban areas don't have the space, time or money to build a large pond. However, there are solutions in the form of a patio pond. This is a small tub of water around the size of a kitchen sink that you fill up for pond wildlife. You can use anything really. I went for a barrel looking plant pot. Make sure there are no holes in the bottom and that it's a strong plastic as some will go brittle after a year or so. So plant pots work well. You can bury these into the ground if you want to, but today for ease, we're having it above ground. This is my granddad's garden, which is a small concrete jungle, but still has lots of birds visiting. Position is key like any pond. We want an area with a mixture of shade and sun. First thing I do is put some substrate on the bottom. This is for the plants as they'll want to root into it and have a mixture of gravel and soil is best, as the gravel alone has little to no nutrients for the plants. I also add a little brick which is going to act as a platform for the brick that the plants will go into. I find a brick with holes works best and you can plug the plants into it. I've chosen marsh marigold and yellow flag iris as both have striking yellow flowers and are pretty hardy as the pond will fluctuate in levels quite a bit, being so small. I also wanted a lily pad in the pond. Now I went to a garden centre to buy one, but they're nearly 30 quid for a lily. I almost had a heart attack at that price. So I went to my mum's pond and cut a chunk off the lilies there. If you're ever looking for lily pads, I'd always advise putting a call out to pond owners first, as they're more than likely have some spare. Now this variety, to be honest, is a bit big, but it will be absolutely fine. I would suggest a smaller species though, if you have the choice. Now lilies float, so I cable tie it to a rock to keep it weighted to the bottom. Now it's time to add the water. I'd suggest rainwater is best, and luckily my granddad has a water butt, so plenty of that to use. Seeing as I was at my mum's pond, I also collected some pond water to get this one kick started. This is optional, but will help with the bacteria and daphnia. There's also some oxygenators in there to help keep the pond nice and healthy. And that's it, pretty simple. If it is raised, you can also add a little ramp like some bricks, so frogs can hop in and out. And within minutes, a local robin was checking the pond out for a drink, so even little changes can make a big difference.